Hi, in this video, let's understand the construction of rudder carrier and rudder carrier bearing. We will see how the weight of rudder and rudder stock are supported, what are the load bearing surfaces and how they are lubricated. In this animation, we will build the complete rudder carrier assembly from scratch to understand how all the components work together. Let's start with the rudder stock. To the rudder stock, two sleeves are fitted with an interference fit. These sleeves act as a sacrificial material, protecting the rudder stock itself from wear and tear. Now, let's assume this is a steering compartment floor. To the floor, a seat is welded. The entire rudder carrier assembly rests on this seat. There would be strengthening members below the floor to further distribute the load to the ship's hull. These are not shown in the animation. The rudder carrier body, which is made up of two pieces, is brought together and connected using nut and bolts. The entire rudder carrier body assembly is then securely fastened to the seat with similar nut and bolts. In both cases, we use reamer bolts for a specific reason. You can see the difference in construction between a reamer bolt and a regular bolt. This image illustrates section views of flange connections where one set of flanges is tightened with regular bolts while the other set is secured with reamer bolts. Regular bolts are typically inserted into oversized holes which may result in slight misalignment between objects when tightened. Conversely, reamer bolts are precisely fitted into accurately reamed bores ensuring a tight fit and perfect alignment of the objects. Now, a disc bearing is fitted on the rudder carrier body and secured with screws. Next, a bush is inserted into the rudder carrier body and secured with screws. Now, the entire rudder stock is inserted from down below. A key for carrier bearing is fitted and the carrier bearing which is split in two pieces is brought together and secured with reamer bolts. When lowered, the carrier bearing rests on the disc bearing forming the rudder carrier bearing assembly. Now the weight of the rudder stock and rudder is taken by the rudder carrier. Next. Four gland packings are installed into the rudder carrier assembly. The orientation of the packings would be offset from each other during the fitting process. Gland flange which is split in four pieces is tightened together using reamer bolts and finally tightened to the carrier body compressing the gland packings. This would form a seal between the rudder trunk and steering gear compartment. A number of passages are drilled into the rudder carrier body to supply grease to the disc bearing and the rudder stock bush. Here you can see the passage of grease through the internal drilled holes. A lubrication system which is either electrically operated at predetermined intervals or mechanically operated by the movement of rams itself is fitted. This system along with necessary piping supplies grease under pressure to the various grease points. A retainer which is made up of two pieces is installed on the rudder carrier assembly which would retain the grease that comes out of the bearing assembly. A tilla is fitted onto the rudder stock along with a key. Tilla is secured to the rudder stock with a locking plate and bolts. Here you can see the frame which would form a foundation for the hydraulic cylinders and ramps. Further, you can see the rest of the steering gear assembly such as foundation chocks, hydraulic cylinders and ramps. Components such as hydraulic pumps, piping and other control systems are not shown in this animation. Thank you for joining us as we have explored the construction of rudder carrier and rudder carrier bearing. I hope you gained valuable insights into this vital components of a ship. Stay tuned for more informative content and don't forget to like, share and subscribe for future updates. Have safe voyages ahead.